Join us for a review of the Audi Q7 facelift as the sporty S-Line and also the p -Hef version today. Let's go! In the front, the Audi Q7 facelift features this new front grille, bigger than before and more in line also with the Audi Q8, for example, looks stronger now than the S-Line, adds those sportier contrasts, especially in the lower part, also with the black frame around here, then new headlamps, horizontally drawn, they start with LED, optional the matrix LED, also for more high beam functions, and this one here is the new laser light which is now also available for the Q7. The length of the Q7 is 5 meters 06, 16 foot 6 or 199 inches and comes standard with a steel suspension, optional also what we have in here the air suspension. That one then varies 9 centimeters overall so 6 centimeters up in the off-road mode, 3 centimeters down when you drive faster on the autobahn and it starts actually with 18 inch wheels goes up to 22 inch 19 with this s line and then this one is optional 21 inch and that looks pretty amazing not the biggest size what would be my tip yeah maybe 19 or 20 because then you have a little bit more comfort than with those but they will still look pretty nice in the rear there's a new modern signature here for the tail lamps that looks really space style, you know, so pretty cool. And then also this bright strip that all goes around the vehicle. Overall, it looks somewhat bulky in the rear still, but the reason again is that you still have enough of luggage space on the interior. If you want it sporty from the look, then there is the Q8, which has some compromise then on the interior space. And here you can charge the 17.3 kilowatt hour battery with a 7.4 kilowatt AC charger. You can also put this one right in here that it doesn't fly around. Um, so, well, <laughs> so it does not have a DC charger, but I mean, considering the battery size, this is also not really needed. So, um, after a couple of hours, it will be full. And even if you just use a normal household plug overnight, this will also be full once again. The promised range, by the way, here for the Q7, also for most of the other PF models at Audi, is between 40 and 50 kilometers. That's about, you know, just some 35 miles of the approximate pure electric range. Then you can decide if you want to just use always the pure electric range, then drive with the combustion engine, or if you rather want to be driving in this hybrid mode and use both at the same time. It depends on your driving profile and also what you want. So Audi, what do they do for their new plug-in hybrid models? In the Q5 and in the A7, they use a 2-liter four-cylinder petrol engine to combine it with this electric drivetrain in the A8 and in the Q7, like here. Well, you can't see much from that in the front here. This one here is the 3-liter six-cylinder petrol engine, the 3-liter TFSI. That's very interesting, this strategy. And there are two horsepower outputs available, actually. In the 55 TFSIE, that's 375 horsepower. Or in the 60 TFSIE, that's 450 horsepower. Each is the total system horsepower output, so pretty strong actually, and we'll be really excited how this one will be driving. Now to the interior. First of all, doors closing sound. Oh, 
amazing. This is a really very solid door closing sound. And you can see, by the way, the door here is really low. So that also protects the inside. Also those beautiful S-line badges from dirt. Then there's Alcantara at the inside of the doors here. You can get different decor elements, reasonable door pockets. There you can also open the normal fuel cap and also right here the, the trunk Bangle Olufsen sound system. Yeah, it has a really nice sound tested it before, definitely. And the S-Line also more sporty accentuations. For example, here the perforated side of the steering wheel, animal skin seat here in this case. But the Q7 can also be bought with fabric seats as base, at least in Europe. And there's also in the normal S-Line, there would also be an Alcantara insert on the middle available. Headroom-wise, there's no panoramic roof in here. In this car, there's one optional available, but still plenty of headroom. One means 86 or 6 foot 1. Steering wheel control always starts manual. Most of the cars also optionally available in electric style, but this one already does a good job. Welcome to this interior. A very clean setup here, definitely. Horizontal stress right there. Yeah, a lot of black piano lacquer is being used. I like this quattro accentuation, this will also be illuminated, for example, but I would like to have something different than this black all over the place because it collects fingerprints and also a lot of dust and so on. But the overall design is pretty cool. Everything is touch based, at least in this middle part. You see the range is at the moment also predicted with 50 km, 52 km. That's actually pretty decent. And then you can also change the view right here, depending on what you want to have. So you're pretty flexible as for this virtual cockpit. And you can also have this GPS view right here. So that's pretty cool and very helpful indeed. And then you also have this EV driving mode. So this favors the EV driving or you can switch it to the hybrid driving, what I um, explained to you earlier. And you can also go into the hold mode. If you, for example, you know, there will be some cities maybe where they say, oh, only electric vehicles can pass here. Uh, all others, you shall not pass. <laughs> then you can use this hold mode. Other than that, it's more efficient to leave it in the auto. Or if you say, I want to drive all electric with my short commuting way, then you leave it in this mode. Also the rear features here, the Alcantara at the inside of the door in the S-Line, that's beautifully done. Then we also have for the kits, here this manual sunshade, like this. Oh, yeah, <laughs> there we go. Okay. And awesome build quality everywhere, what you touch and see and feel. They're really on top of the game here with the Q7, especially even more with the facelift. Then a lot of space at the back of the interior. And even here in the PHEV version, there's no compromise on the back seating in this normal back bench. There's no seven-seater option available here for the PF. That's not possible, but I mean, this will do just fine. You can get inside as well. And see here, I have plenty of leg room left when I would be driving even here and also with a more voluminous S sport seat. Then you're really flexible because you can slide the bench forward and backward. And that's actually possible for each individual seat so you can also very well sit in the rear one of the very few cars where you can sit as a tall adult in the middle seat perfectly you can also just put this middle seat forward then this is all possible to be flexible in you know trunk length and the space you have here in the front available isofix here at the outside it's also nicely covered as for that and i mean there is of course this transmission channel here yes but you can still sit pretty decently here also have an additional climate control in lower part, two 12 volt power supplies. And yeah, headroom is actually absolutely plentiful. Well, we have darker windows here in the rear area. There were, therefore, we cannot see it that well. But I can tell you at the moment, the top cover of the trunk is closed. And when I open the hatch right here, the cover automatically raises up like here. And when I close it again, it goes down. That's a really great, comfortable function, definitely. When you have the air suspension, you can also lower the car a little bit here that you have a lower loading niveau. So that's also handy and pretty good in square dimensions, this trunk split. And there are actually two limitations here for the PHEV. One, there's no lower ground, so you cannot put anything up here. Usually you could put this one up. And again, there's no seven-seater option available. And the second limitation is this one here. So there's like an additional box you know, for the AC charger. So you're a little bit more limited in the space, in the, you know, in, the, in the width right there. But still, I mean, even at this point right there, it's not exactly one meters 20, but 
It's definitely more than a meter in width right here and in the upper part, you know, even a little bit more. So still, you know, you couldn't get along with that very well. And the length of the trunk here is one meter and 14. The only thing that I don't like that much is when you have to flip the seats, you have to go all the way around. Then you have to, you know, release them from here and you have to do it individually. That's then the downside of this, um, you know, uh, bench setup like this. So there you can also see the difference. Welcome to Thomas's Driving Lounge with the Q7 PF TFSIE, how they call it now, here in the stronger horsepower version. And we start all electric, that's of course cool when you're in the city and so on, and everything is calm and silent and so on. That's definitely pretty helpful. And yeah, you know, definitely some things I, you know, I enjoy most about uh, driving those PFs, and of course the pure. Uh, battery electric vehicles and the BEFs. <laughs> yeah, and um, I mean, the car is yeah, about, you know, 300 to 400 kilograms heavier than normal Q7 with the 3 liter TFSI turbo petrol engine. So you have to bear that in mind. However, this electric drive always transports some kinds of, you know, first of all, tranquility, you know, because it's silent and also of, you know, lightness again you know because you hear nothing when you hit the throttle there's this electric drive which does feel different from the combustion drive the promised range is 640 kilometers on the combustion engine and about 50 kilometers on the pure electric drive that would be about 400 miles combustion engine and about 30 miles as for the pure electric power so overall i think you can very well live with it and the total system output here, I mean, with this 60 TFSI E version giving us 450 horsepower. That's horsepower wise, you know, like SQ7 alike. So um, really a lot of power, um, definitely very interesting. And you can also at the moment just drive pure electric. That's cool. And especially if you have the um, chance to re recharge it frequently. If you like a situation like this, you're just rolling <laughs> behind this boat there. Um, for example, set the cruise control um, like this, and there's also adaptive cruise control in here. And you're just rolling, don't need too much power, additional power. Then you can also use the EV mode on the on the motorway, you know, the car's just rolling or coasting, and that's also fine for the EV mode then, and then you can also be actually quite efficient. However, yes, a combustion engine is more efficient on the motorway because the best efficiency point for a combustion engine would be about 90 kilometers an hour. So, um, actually the car is in the hybrid mode now. So yeah, I can also, just when I use this lower button, switch between EV and hybrid. And here now in the hybrid mode, now I can see those yellow symbols there in the, in the, the dashboard. And now we are running on the combustion engine. Now again on the EV because we're rolling, re speed's been reduced. So, it switches then constantly when you are in this hybrid mode, depending on the situation. I told you earlier, this car does have some performance from the combined power then. So as soon as this small construction site is over, I'll accelerate it out. First of all, again, also here in the motorway, I mean, we're at 80 kilometers an hour, and that's so super silent and relaxing in here. That's just what I love about this vehicle. It's, yeah, so relaxing. Seen here, the um, lane keeping assist was a little bit irritating when being uh, irritated when being here in this construction site. So I had to counter steer then for a while. So as long as the wide lines are all good and all fine, that's nice. That's good. But then you know those are some special situations here, definitely. So and this will be over soon. But overall, the car is good to handle. I mean, although it's not small vehicle. You have a good overall visibility. The windows are pretty much upright. You can see where the car is ending. So it is one of the cars where you, well, there are smaller cars which are not that easy to control, you know? So it always depends. Do I miss the all wheel steering, which is not available for the, well, the rear access steering, which is not available for the PF? Yeah, on the motorway, it doesn't 
play such a role, but I do somehow miss it when, you know, driving around in the city and so on. The GLE is more set a little bit more on, on, on comfort. And this one here is actually already quite sporty. And pff, do I feel the additional weight? It's hard to say. I mean, this car is heavy anyway, so there's not much difference in there. Um, I think driving wise, you do feel a difference when you have the rear axle steering or not. Yes. If there's no more weight or not, hmm, I don't know. As I said initially, it also feels, you know, so silent and refined in here that the electric drivetrain also makes you relax a little bit more. Maybe even that brings down the fuel consumption a little bit. That would also be a, a funny finding for sure, you know. So definitely a great ride here. And so for whom is this p -half? I think, you know, when you have this profile to use that, like, you know, commuting to work in a short way during the week and then on the weekends you do longer trips or something, you know, that can make sense. And now to our conclusion for today with the Audi Q7 facelift and the special focus on the Q7 p -half. First of all, in the exterior styling, this facelift brings more strength to the whole car and, well, not maybe in the S-Line, but in the other version, it looks more SUV, more off-roadish and less as a van, maybe as before. In the S-Line then, more sporty situations, it also depends on which size of the wheels you pick, of course, but definitely here also with the painted wheel arches than a sportier style. And a nice contrast here with the black pack as well, so that fits very well to this white color. On the interior, high build quality as we used to. Now with those infotainment system upgrades makes it a modern car. There's no interior differentiation as for the infotainment now anymore between Q7 and Q8. Yeah, you can argue with the MMI not before you could control stuff better while driving. However, the menu structure is pretty easy so you can find the things pretty fast and that's also good. And also with the upgraded voice input that helps. Overall, I get along with the system pretty well, I have to say. Good comfort, also great riding comfort. And this one is, although it's a pretty heavy car, even heavier as a PF, still it feels somehow easy and agile to drive. And the thing is, with this power here, you maybe saw the small clip from the action cam from the acceleration 0 to 60 kilometers an hour. And that was in, you know, heavy rain. Still, this all-wheel drive was managing that very well. Also good to has an advantage to have the classic all-wheel drive 46% base distribution, then adapting in just a little bit. Together with the big 3-liter 6-cylinder engine, I think that's a good mix overall. Yeah, I mean, when they could put a bigger battery in there, you can have an even higher electric range. The Mercedes GLE is a good um, example for that with a double uh, you know double the size of the battery and also double the range here about you know 50 kilometers or 30 miles it is indeed realistic and you don't have the real electric punch the pure electric one that's not how this car is laid out which you would have in the GLE then with a pure electric punch you know from the traffic light and maybe some you know uh, gaps you want to fill in there but then again most of the time I could still drive all electric because in the normal traffic situations, you don't have so many situations where you're like hammer it all the way through, even on the Germany. So you can use the electric drivetrain quite a lot, especially if you're commuting short ways or for inner city, city uh, drives that you can reduce emissions locally. And you always have the recuperation possibility that even when the battery is depleted, you will can still lower the fuel consumption by using the recuperation. Then again, something from the battery, especially for the you know, first few meters and so on. So this can be useful if it fits to your driving profile. And overall, definitely a very interesting drive here today. What's your take on that one here? The Q7 p -half. And of course, it might even be an alternative to the, um, you know, especially when you use the hybrid mode, to the powerful alternatives because, I mean, that was a really a strong acceleration we had here in this combination with the total system output. Thanks so much for tuning in today and also tune in to more videos here of the Q7 facelift or maybe the Q8. We will also link them in the video description. See you there.